Hey everyone, it's Michelle with Florida Keys Birding. I hope you enjoyed my last video about where frigate birds go during hurricanes. And this video is more of a documentary on the magnificent frigate bird and exactly where they live, their range, what they eat, how to ID them, all of that exciting stuff. So let's get right into it. So the magnificent frigate bird is a black pterodactyl-like bird well, you could also kind of say it looks like a giant bat, <laughs> but that's just my opinion. So um, this bird soars effortlessly on tropical breezes with hardly any wing flap um, using its deeply forked tail to steer. Watching a magnificent frigate bird float in the air is truly magnificent. Hence the name magnificent frigate bird. Anyway, um, I will have to say that they are quite majestic in my opinion, and I could just sit there and watch them soar all day long. So these birds are also called the pirates of the sky because they like to steal food from other birds mid-air. Male frigate birds have a bright red pouch on the throat which they inflate like a balloon to attract females. And females, unlike most other seabirds, look different than males with their white chest. So as far as color pattern goes, we can get a little bit more into that. The males are obviously mostly black with the red throat patch, but females and young birds have varying amounts of white on the head, chest, and belly. Females have a white chest and a dark head, and juveniles start with a white head and belly and gradually obtain darker heads. Young birds also have a pale tan streak on the upper wing. Breeding males are entirely black um, except for the bright red throat patch, but that part is not always visible. Sometimes they'll just look all black. So as far as the size and the shape, um, the Magnificent Frigate is a large seabird with long angular wings. They have a deeply forked tail that is often held close in a point. Um, and the bill is long and sturdy with, prominent, with a prominently hooked tip. They have an average wingspan of 90 inches or about seven and a half feet. Wow, that is a long wingspan. That's longer than me. <laughs> I don't, longer than most of us. I don't think there's very many seven and a half feet people out there, but you know, if you are, you know, more power to you. Um, so as far as behavior goes, um, they can be seen frequently soaring in the air and they are also called the masters of pursuit because like I had said before they will chase other frigate birds down to try to get their food now this is a nasty fact exactly how they get the food from them they actually force them to regurgitate their recent meal which they will scoop up before it hits the water Ugh. <laughs> that's disgusting I read this fact and I was like are you kidding me wow I wish I didn't know that I wish I didn't have that mental picture in my head now you have it there you go <laughs> you're welcome so their gracefulness ends as soon as they head towards land because they're so graceful in the air but when they get to land they can only awkwardly perch in low shrubs and trees I have seen many perched in the Isla Mirada and Marathon area where there are these long bridges. Um, there's just kind of miles and miles of bridges in between Isla Mirada and Marathon. And I often see them perched on the um, like telephone wires or the electric wires, which is weird, but I, I do see them out there sometimes. But for the most part, these birds do spend most of their lives hundreds of miles offshore soaring in the air. So frigate birds cannot swim. We had discussed that in the previous video um, and their feathers are not waterproof. Um, so they, they cannot float on the water. They cannot be, you know, thrusted down into the water. They'll drown. They will not make it. Um, they, they can't. They have to stay in the air or on land, one of the two. So another interesting fact is that these birds can sleep while they're flying. So what they'll do is they will, you know, fly over the ocean for months at a time, over the water, and they can engage in regular sleep um, and they can also use half their brain at the same time 
to sleep uh, during soaring and gliding flight and they can make sure that they stay up in the air so i'm assuming this is kind of like a half asleep half of a half awake kind of thing um, but they're still getting their sleep by doing that so that's pretty interesting that's pretty amazing if you ask me um, and when they do actually come to land for breeding their strong toes help them hold on to branches posts even boat masts um, and they put their small feet in combination with their short legs um, making it nearly impossible for them to walk on land so they can't float and they can't really walk on land either it's kind of it's kind of interesting um, so on land males will often flutter their balloon like throat sack to cool off it's called a guller pouch that's the technical name males and females also regulate their body temperatures by holding their wings up to the sun themselves to get airborne they flap a few times and use the wind to help them lift off into the air so they can't really do like the whole like running start thing like like you would on a plane or something you know it's not like a, a takeoff like that they just kind of flap into the air so male frigate birds will gather in groups in order to court females they will perch in low trees and shrubs with their red throat sack inflated like a balloon and clutter their bills waving their heads back and forth and calling at females flying over well i bet that is a sight to see it's really interesting what birds do to impress other birds that the males impress the females wouldn't that be funny if you know like people did that you know <laughs> i don't know it's it's just kind of silly if you think about it um so females will choose a mate and begin building a nest on the male's display perch oh so he makes a display perch for her isn't that nice um, and the pair stays together for up to three months after which the male leaves and the female raises the chick alone for up to a year well that kind of sucks <laughs> This is the male he's like hey we had fun honey it was great but i gotta go you can go ahead and raise the baby now <laughs> yeah so i don't really i don't really like that that kind of sucks they don't stay together and he doesn't help raise the baby but you know that's that's nature so um okay so as far as food goes the magnificent frigate bird will eat primarily flying fish tuna herring squid which they grab from the surface of the water without getting wet. They also eat plankton, crabs, jellyfish, and other items on the surface of the water, including discarded fish from fishing boats. Um, and I have seen them try to grab fish off of fishing lines, and uh, you know they can get in trouble that way. They can really get injured and stuff like that. So that kind of stuff does happen. So magnificent frigate birds do forage for themselves, but they also chase and harass other seabirds and frigate birds. Like we said with the whole, you know, regurgitation catch, that was kind of nasty. Um, so yeah, I can't say that I'm a super fan of this bird's behavior. It's really kind of strange, <laughs> but that's okay. They're still beautiful anyways. Um, so their habitat is mostly over tropical and subtropical oceans throughout the Americas. They do forage in lagoons as well as far out to sea and nest in low grade scrub vegetation on islands and frigate birds will range along coast and islands and tropical and subtropical waters hence why we see them over the keys sometimes but not probably not on regular mainland you know florida always um, unless you're by the beach or something you might a barrier island maybe you might see one here and there they nest and roost in mangrove caves on coral reefs and in low trees and shrubs on islands. F uh, magnificent frigate birds forage over warm oceans far out to sea along the coast and in shallow lagoons. I wonder if they nest near dry tortugas. That would be interesting. I'm going to I'm going to guess that they probably do. Okay, so talking about nesting, I actually saw um, in these photos here, uh, I actually saw frigate birds nesting in Naples near Marco Island. There was a barrier island out there 
and they were all just flocking together on this island, flying around. They were all perched on the islands and making a big racket. Um, and there was probably like hundreds, hundreds of them. There was tons and tons of frigate birds. It was really cool to see. This was during the summertime. It was like June, probably like two, one or two years ago. Not last June, but the June before that. So I've got some pictures here of that. Um, so with nesting, magnificent frigate birds nest in dense colonies on top of low trees and shrubs. We talked about that. Um, their nests are packed into small areas and are often within striking distance of another nest. So the female builds the nest on the display perch, like we said, and she um, used by the male that she chooses. So the female gets to choose which male she likes. So the male brings sticks to the female which she arranges into a flimsy platform about 9 to 12 inches wide. The male gathers sticks from trees and shrubs, but also steals them from other males. Look at that, they're stealing food, they're stealing sticks and nesting material. Like, come on, what is up with the frigate bird? <laughs> the nesting, uh, nest building takes about 13 days. They usually have one egg per clutch and they do one bird per season. That makes sense because that is a big old bird. I mean, that is a big bird. Imagine they had like two or three or four eggs. I don't know. That would be a, that would be a lot to handle for one bird, <laughs> especially since the dad leaves and the mom is left to raise the baby. Okay, so <laughs> incubation period is about 53 to 61 days. Oh, that's pretty long for a bird. And nestling period is 150 to 185 days. That that's pretty long compared to songbirds. Most of them are like 10 days and bye bye, kicked out the nest. Um, eggs are white and they're born naked and helpless like most other birds are so as far as conservation goes the frigate bird is on the yellow watch list so partners in flight estimates that the global breeding population of magnificent frigate birds at 113,000 um, and rates them about 16 out of 20 on the continental concern score indicating a species of high conservation concern the Magnificent Frigate is also included on the yellow watch list R for species that are not declining but still remain vulnerable due to a small range or population and moderate threats. In areas where they breed, many populations are declining due to urban and resort development. Wow, this is a trend with a lot of these conservation issues. Habitat loss, another reason why we need to protect habitat. So several islands in the Caribbean, including Marquesas Keys off southern Florida, um, Aruba, and Seal Key in the Bahamas no longer support breeding colonies. Shame on you! <laughs> so um, they don't support the breeding colonies um, following coastal development. Ugh! This is not, I don't, I don't know. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Come on, people. We need to support the colonies of the frigate bird. We need to support the breeding colonies for all these birds. At least give them the fighting chance. So overfishing, predator introductions on nesting islands, and um, hurricanes may also reduce nesting success. So, um, you know, overfishing, that is a big problem. So we probably don't need to be out overfishing the oceans all the time like we are. Um, Overdevelopment of properties, pushing all of the natural animals out. I mean, I get it. People want to get rich. People want to develop properties. I understand it. But, you know, what, what good is you know, a big hotel and lots of houses if there's no wildlife left and there's no plants left and there's no nature left. I mean, there's just a bunch of concrete. I don't know. It, it, that doesn't sound like a nice world for to, to me. It, it just doesn't. So, um, so yeah, overfishing, predator introductions, yeah, because we've got issues with invasive species and stuff like that. You know, I could see eating, you know, them eating eggs and that kind of thing. Um, and then hurricanes, we can't really do much about that. You know, we just have to do our best. But from what I read in the previous video, um, it did say as far as breeding populations go, if there's hurricanes, they do bounce back rather quickly and they do try again. So that's a plus at least. So 
Um, if you can advocate for not overfishing and not overdevelopment, do so in whatever means that you are able to to protect the frigate bird and all of our wildlife that are um, seeing these kind of declining issues. You know, habitat for them is more the breeding um, population, so having those islands that they can go to to breed um, you know they're not going to come to the trees in your yard obviously so there's nothing you can do as far as that goes um, but you know trying to um, you know not support those laws where they could just keep building stuff everywhere so that's my two cents <laughs> whether you wanted it or not anyways all right i hope you guys learned a lot about the frigate bird some interesting behaviors that i've don't totally love um, but also some really amazing behaviors like sleeping in flight and uh, you know how they nest and and all these different things so um, yeah and I hope that maybe if you've seen a frigate bird let me know in the comments if you've ever observed one or if you're still looking for one and want to see one send me a message in the comments and I can tell you where to find one if you're ever in the Florida Keys